Hi everyone, welcome back to Box of Delights. Today we're looking at Senjutsu, The Battle for Japan by Paul David Allen and James Faulkner of Stone Sword Games. They've partnership with Lucky Duck Games to bring this one to the table. It's a pre-production copy of the game, it's still in shrink, so we're going to open it up together. I'm going to go away and learn it, I'm going to come back and teach you how to play the solo game. It plays one to four. <laughs> Let's get into it then. I've been really looking forward to this one. It is a card-driven skirmish game. And I should have some miniatures in here too. And I believe, I had a look at this at UK Games Expo, yeah, there's your notice. It, it's got two books. So we've got the rule book and then we've got a solo campaign book that introduces to the, you to the game gradually with some wonderful artwork through it. All right, so I'm gonna go and get set up and uh, join me back at the table as we learn to play this game. There's two ways to play the solo game. You can either set up a random game, which is what I've done here, and I'll show you how I did that in a moment, or you can play through the solo campaign, as I said in the introduction. Now, as it goes in this solo campaign book, there's actually two campaigns. There's a solo campaign, and halfway through, it switches to Brothers in Arms, which is a two-player campaign, a two-player cooperative campaign. Right, so that's the campaign book. There are expansions to be had, a second solo campaign book already. Yeah, I know. So this is just the base game. If you want to play a random game, then in here it tells you how to construct a solo AI. Um, and also just it suggests just pick a random map, pick some random terrain, and off you go. And that's exactly what I've done here today. So I've picked a couple of opponents. A couple of AI opponents. This is me, I'm Ronin, this is my solo character, and we've got some terrain features which I'll talk about in a little bit. So in the base game you've got these other miniatures, you've actually got uh, one, two, three other heroes you can play, like so your main characters, there's some supporting characters here, and so these are the miniatures you can play, and you can actually take on these other kind of champions these heroes if you like because they've got their own solo decks so you've got one for the warrior the student ronin which is what i'm playing and the master so those are the four main characters or you can play these and these have got co-op board standees you can kind of play these uh, kind of minions if you like and again there's different types of ai opponents that you can play against so here i've picked a samurai boss and a yari ashigari we look in the insert and see there are cardboard standees for the different types of so there's a ranged one here so we've got uh, katana ashigari here and then we've got one guy here who's carrying a firearm arc bousier i think they're called this is another terrain tile they're double-sided this so there's two sides there's uh, the snowy terrain here and there's a burning village on the flip side but also in the solo campaign, it actually gives you additional maps in this ring binder. Okay, so and these can supplement these as well. So, for example, if you look at the second one you play in the solo campaign, is the Bandit Tavern, and it plays this map adjacent to the Burned Village here. Okay? So it actually creates bigger maps with this ring binder. Cool. All right. Wait, we're not going to look at the solo campaign today. I'm going to let you explore that. But in the solo campaign, let me just say, it's got a half dozen different maps to go through. But it also sets you up and it tells you how to construct the Ronin deck. So you will play as Ronin, which I'm going to do today as well. So I'm kind of half helping you a little bit because we'll also play Ronin. How to set up Ronin's deck, how to set up your AI opponents. So in the first scenario, you're actually taking on the Katana Ashikari and the Yara Ashikari. So not dissimilar to what we're doing here. So that's your deck construction. 
Okay. Yes, this is a deck construction game. So the first thing you will do is build your own deck. You'll have a minimum of 30 cards in your deck, up to 40 cards, a maximum of 40 cards in your deck. But if you don't want to construct your deck, like I say, this, the solo scenario comes with a deck construction. But also at the back of the regular rules, if you're playing a random game or a multiplayer game, it's actually got pre-built decks for the four main characters. Okay, They're called signature decks. So we're going to use the Ronin character signature deck. Just go and grab the relevant cards. They're named and numbered card count. There's two core cards, which are these two here, that don't count towards your deck size. Okay, so it's 30 to 40 cards plus these two, and they have this wave symbol over on the left hand side. So each character, each main character, has two of these cards. This is their core ability card. This is Ronin's, it's written at the bottom there, and this is their core weapon card. Okay, core weapon. All right, okay. Each main character has a character card. This is Ronin's, a lone wolf with no master, and it says which weapons he can start with. So we've got the Naginata. And then each character has his own Kame tree card, and they all look slightly different. This is Ronin's, we'll come to that in a moment. So there you go, take your two core cards, character cards, your Kame tree, your deck, give it a shuffle, okay. And then for the AI, the solo rules tell you to divide the solo AI cards, they have solo at the bottom, into these seven decks. And then depending on the type of AI opponent you're taking on, select a certain number from these decks. So I'm going to do that now. So for example, for the samurai boss, it says two from deck one, two from deck four, one from deck five, and then an additional card from either deck four or five. Now four is attacking cards, five is a defensive card. So you can decide the type of opponent you want to play. And we're going to do the same for Yari Ashigari. So for Samurai Boss, two from deck one. So I'll turn them face down, give them a shuffle, grab two cards. Two from deck four, take two. And then one from deck five. And I think we'll go for a more attacking deck, so we're going to go for one more from deck four. All right, so that's how to set up the AI. That's the Samurai Boss's deck. We'll do the same for the Yari, which is this guy. And we're ready to go. You can start on one of these four hexes closest to you. Same for our opponent AIs, but I've put a cherry tree there as an obstacle. So there's only two starting hexes. We'll look at these different terrain types in a minute. But like I say, just set them up randomly. In a two player game, decide between you which terrain types and take turns placing one on the map in the campaign. It tells you exactly where to place and what to place in each of the different types of terrain. It's a fight to the death and you can decide pretty much how many wounds you want your AI opponents to be able to take before they're defeated. There's a recommendation in the book so fighting two AI opponents reckons a wound limit of three so that's what we'll play today. They can take three wounds each. These are the wound cards before they're defeated. Now as for us so we're playing Ronin, look on their character card and it will show you this bottom number five. We can take up to five wounds. This is our hand size. So if we hold more than five at the end of our turn, we discard down to five. And this top number here is our advantage. This is basically your speed. So we've got an advantage of 27. We treat AI opponents as if they have an AI of just one. So when it comes to who has advantage, it will always be us. As I said, this is our Kame tree. And it kind of represents our state of mind. And we take one of these Kame rings here and we'll place it where our Kame position currently is. And at the start of the game, it begins here on this space. Okay. We also have an advantage token. And in a multiplayer game, you'll use this advantage track and you'll order these according to which player has highest or lowest advantage. In the solo game, I say 
AI panels always have an advantage of just one, so we don't really need to worry about tracking that. Instead, we use this flip side of the board to track the AI's behavior. Again, they have a Kame ring and an advantage token. We want the need in ours in the solo game. And we just place these randomly. Now they can either be defensive or aggressive. This would be their aggressive token. This will be their defensive token. Let's have Yari in an aggressive position. Keep this to one side. And we'll have the samurai boss in a defensive position. So we use the ring. Okay. And these circles here record whether their preference is to face us head on, to come down our left flank or come down our right flank. I'm going to start them again randomly. We'll just start them something like this. Okay, so we'll have Yari going left, the Samurai Boss going right, and we'll see how that changes as the game progresses. In the scenario books, it actually tells you what their positions will be. Okay, so for the first one, it says uh, Yari Ashigari is preferred right stance offensive. Okay, so stance and behavior. All right, so that's their decks set up. Put that down in the middle. All right, we've given our deck a shuffle. Before we do, actually, say we have a hand size of five. These cards don't count, they're not cards in our hand. Our core cards don't contribute to our deck size or indeed our hand size. So we're gonna draw five more cards. But before we do, if you look at your deck, at the bottom of some of these cards, you'll find that it looks like a stack of cards. This is called the prepare icon. And if you've got any prepare cards, you can actually put them straight into your hand. So we've got heavy armor as an option. I think that's the only one. Yeah, I think that's the only one. In the solo campaign, it actually gives you a fend, you can actually put a fend card as a prepare. They don't normally have a prepare icon, but they've modified the starting deck for the campaign. So if we want to, we can put heavy armor in our deck. So why don't we do that? Okay, now we'll give this a shuffle. And we'll draw four more cards up to our hand size alongside this. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, so we've got four attack cards. I'm glad I took the heavy armor. All right, this is going to be my hand. So my hand is these five plus these two. Our objective is to defeat all of our opponents. So remember, three wounds each. You can also stun them. You can stun them with effects. You can stun them by pushing them into these terrain obstacles. For AI opponents, their stun limit is equal to their wound limit, so three each. Okay, so three stuns, three wounds will do it. I'll just give these a quick shuffle. And incidentally, the AI doesn't, it only has got, got a stack of five cards, all right? One of these cards, possibly two, will have a reset on it. So what's gonna happen is, as they go through their deck, if they hit the reset card, it's gonna shuffle their discard into their deck. So they end up with a constantly flowing deck of cards. Conversely, for us, our deck is limited um, but it's much bigger, right? Between 30 and 40 cards. If we run out of cards in our deck, every time we would draw, we would take a wound instead. So there is kind of a time limit to these little skirmishes. All right, that's the solo game set up and we're ready to go.